Hi everyone. We're <laughs> we're being joined by Ruin McFadden. He is joining us from Heidelberg, um, and very recently he has taken it upon himself to become an amateur cartographer, and he's made some really beautiful maps about grappling, about jiu-jitsu, about judo, and we are going to be delving into that today. Let's just go um, through your maps one by one. I, I have five maps at the moment put together. So one is the grappling around the world map, which is all the folk wrestling styles. I have one called the Father of BJJ, which charts Mitsuo Maeda's journey from Japan to the, the West, let's call it, so North America, Brazil. I have one called Grasping Chaos, which is about the, the conflict between the Kodokan, so the, the, the first judo school, and what were the more established jiu-jitsu schools at the time. And that was really interesting because I, I didn't know much about the early days of judo, and I certainly tended to regard judo as, uh, you know, more of a, let's call it a traditional martial arts. Respect, Spirituality, it's a little bit more zen, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. in comparison to BJJ. You know, BJJ was just you know, street brawls and dojo storms and everything. And then you read up on the early days of judo and you're like, no, it was exactly the same. Yeah. They were dojo storming the shit out of each other back in the day. There was one guy, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, like I posted his picture on Facebook a while ago. And uh, I found like Kano actually kicked him out of the full time because he was getting involved in so many brawls and he actually <laughs> killed guys and he threw them down the stairs. And, broke their necks apparently unintentionally so judo was just as rough and ready in the early days as BJJ ever was and again just open, open my own eyes one call I just put online uh, Iron Roots that's like the, the, I call it the bloodline of Sambo so it's the various different regional styles around the former USSR and also Japan that were distilled into Sambo so judo and wrestling and then some of the belt wrestling styles from Central Asia so again, trying to test out my shitty Russian, which is, you know, significantly shittier than I thought. Oh yeah, I recognize the word for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then the final one is one that I call choke points, which is the early days of BJJ, and that is a map of Rio, showing a lot of the, the famous fights, like you know, Elio versus Kimura and Hickson versus Rezulu mm -hmm. or Carlos Gracie, uh, oh no, sorry, Carlson Gracie versus the my Santana and uh, just map it. like if you, if you ever want to go to Rio as a train you just want to you need a little sightseeing map mm -hmm. you know I wonder, wonder where, where did this fight happen where did this dojo storm happen where did these guys have their street brawl you know you can still it's a modern map of Rio as well so you can tell it's like oh no it's on that street but, you know my hospital is on so those are the five maps at the moment that are out there and then um, very cool more to come basically for the whole thing our role is the one is uh, I was at the BJJ Globetrotters camp in Heidelberg back mm -hmm. in August last year and uh, like what they've been doing I mean you know just for anyone who doesn't know Globetrotters they put on training camps which are usually just that they're training camps you know you have classes you have open mats the occasional pub crawl on a Monday night which always ends well and what they started doing recently was also holding workshops on various different topics so like sport related topics first aid uh, how to build and maintain a school, you know, how to attract members and so on. And uh, Christians, the head of the Globetrotters himself, has been holding a workshop uh, at the past few camps on how to just have ideas, how to just be creative, how to make stuff happen. So I live in Heidelberg, I've been camp, uh, and I made a point of going to that workshop. It has been recommended to me by the beforehand. And it was great, like it was an hour and a half, and I mean, he has ideas, and he definitely makes shit happen. So, you know, if you go to a workshop like that, and you know, it's like, you know, he's not just talking shit, like it comes from personal experience. And like one, like recommendation he had that really stuck with me was like, number one, just like jot down ideas, like 10 ideas a day, just like, you know, it could be complete bullshit ideas, like every idea is equal. But he says, what often happens, you know, automatically, unintentionally, more often than not, is that, all of a sudden you realize that two or more ideas combine together. Mm. So you, you realize all of a sudden, oh, hang on, that matches really well with this. And oh, I meant to work with that guy on a project, so how can we bring this all together? Oh, you know, okay, I like traveling, boom. I like history, check. I like maps, check. 
I like jiu-jitsu, check. I like folklore. I like mythology. Boom, check, 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 check. Probably by the time I got to work, I think I at least had the first little inkling. It's like, huh, you know what I could do is like I could make a map of all the different folk wrestling styles out there. And I had a little sketchbook there, and I started coming up with layouts. It's like, okay, am I going to just focus on Europe? Am I going to do the whole world? And she said, fuck it, I do the whole world. I went to Ukraine for another training camp the week after that, and I had my notebook there on the plane, and I was like sketching away, like, you know, all these like really like rough maps of the world. And I was trying to brainstorm just off the top of my head all the different folk wrestling styles that I knew. So I'm sure people were looking at me, like, you know, drawing maps and you know all this like bizarre languages and arrows and stuff but like i knew that folk wrestling was a thing i knew that wrestling was this activity that has come up with us since the dawn of time you know since before we were people since before we were talking to each other we were probably throwing each other on the ground for fun but then when you just see like how many styles number one have been out there but also yeah, i think equally impressively is how many are still out there like, I have a little legend at the bottom of that map that covers uh, four things. It's like, uh, were strikes allowed, were submissions allowed, uh, was groundwork allowed, and is it still practiced? Like, is it extinct? And very few of them, very few of the ones that I have on the map are extinct. Like, most of them are still being practiced mm. in there for centuries, maybe even longer. And, uh, yeah, then I said, well, okay, now I have a layout, now I have an idea gotta go and build it and I am like I'm not a, a designer by by trade or by education at all I study geography I'm, I'm gonna use this as a way to force myself to learn some some design skills so I don't know how much I actually forced myself for that map because I mean you asked me like when I posted on Facebook you're like man what, what software do you use and I was like ah oh, Microsoft Paint <laughs> all the more impressive for real you know, listen, I, I didn't really go too far out of my comfort zone. I mean, I've been using paint for like fucking 20 years and stuff. But I did, near the end of the process, start messing around with him, you know, you know, like this free version of Photoshop. So that was the first map that went out. I have one about, uh, I called it the father of BJJ just because I wanted something kind of nice and catchy that fit like a, a little header bar. But it's about Mitsumi Aeta, who traveled from Japan to the US. Spent some time in Europe, was fighting and holding lessons and forming judo clubs, and then eventually worked his way down through Central America, South America, landed in Brazil. Ultimately, spent the last two or three decades of his life in Brazil, and had a hugely influential uh, effect on the formation of BJJ. So, the official story is he was in Belém, and uh, he held a demonstration which was witnessed by a young Carlos Gracie. Carlos Gracie was so impressed. Coach Maeda was accepted as a student, and then Gracie eventually brought uh, BJJ to Rio de Janeiro. Like, that's the official story. You read some other sources, and they say, no, like, Carlos Gracie never met him at all. Like, he might have seen a demonstration, he might have heard of this judo or kano jiu jitsu, as it was sometimes called, but he didn't train under him. Like, it was more of a friend of a friend or a student of a student. So, you know, the thing about these early martial arts, like BJJ in particular, there's so much bullshit out there. Like, mm -hmm. there's so much, you know. There's like one narrative here and one narrative there, and then someone's just trying to sell, you know, their this. And unfortunately, I don't think there's any real way to determine the one true narrative. There's so many conflicting ones. And I mean, you might come across a fact from a newspaper in, let's say, 1936, and you know, on the surface of it, you say, well, okay, it was published in the paper, that should be correct. But again, you never know who the journalist was. You never know who he was friends with. You never know he might have just like, it might have been hearsay. So you have one narrative here in a newspaper. You have another narrative in a book. You have another narrative in someone's blog post that they claim to have translated from some Portuguese interview with, you know, some Gracie cousin third time removed. It's hard on a map to have footnotes. Like I mentioned this recently in a podcast. Like if you write a, an article, you write a blog post, you can have footnotes where you can clarify and do that. Like I can clarify it in internet posts or whatever but ultimately the map is out there and i'm trying as best i can to present the objective or as objective as possible view of history and, you know it's kind of, it's just a balance that like, you know i always try to especially anything to do with the early days try and get away from like the real like the 
view of history, but you know, I'm sure anyone can look at those maps and they might say, oh, but you know, this is wrong, or oh, this is too biased, and I can, I can do my best. But yeah, like as a number one priority, is that I learned something. That was Ruin McFadden. He is the host and creator of A Hero with a Thousand Holds podcast, where he dives into grappling history. He also makes these amazing maps. Link is below, and I will catch you soon. Bye.